you got Leon D here and we're going to talk about food. You know, I'm not an expert on anything to do with food, but I've been around a long time and I am a professional barbecueologist. I know food. I know what I like. I know what I don't like. I know a lot of things that you may not like. That's the intro for Leon D. Let's get it on. Hey, welcome to Showbiz Eats. Tonight, we're going to talk about something that's going on right now in our, in our country. We're going to talk about the White House and cooks and chefs. Now, we tell you that we're not experts on anything we do. We're not experts. But what we are experts on is what we know, what we observe, and what we have seen. And see, when it comes to the White House and cooks and chefs, it's a long history. I'm going to give you some knowledge tonight that you never knew, and it's going to open your eyes. Now, the difference between a chef and a cook is that, like me, I can cook anything. You tell me how, I'll master it. A chef is somebody who is a big dreamer. They want to know and push themselves to the limit of what they don't know. That's the beauty of a chef. Failure does not bother them. A cook, I want to make sure I don't fail on anything that I like or my customers might like. And generally, a chef is generally trained. Culinary schools, culinary arts, they're generally trained. Cooks, nah, strictly love. Strictly love. Now, in the White House, you know, you have an executive chef, and then she has a staff of about 16 to 20 people. She makes about $85,000 a year. They make about 40000 The sous chef make about 65000 And they cook for the people that they that hired them to cook. Now, when it comes to celebrity chefs, the White House chefs are celebrity chefs. They're not Bobby Flay. They're not Emerald. You know, they're not, they're not, um, you know, you can go down the list and, and, and think of um, a lot of people who think they can cook. And, 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 and that's one of the most difficult jobs in the world because you're cooking for all kind of races and cultures. You know, you're cooking for a lot of different people. Do you really want to do that? You may cook foods that you don't like, but if someone from a culture who doesn't eat meat want that meal, that's what you're going to cook. Now, executive chefs got a title when Kennedy came in and Jacqueline wanted to do something with Rene Verdun. She hired him, and then after that, Henry Haller took over. Now, personally, I would have hired a young Emerald. Lots of meat, lots of butter, lots of bread. That's what I would have hired. But they wanted these cooks who can cook for anybody. And quite a few of them went out and got cooks who were French trained. Have you ever had French food? It's pretty as hell, like a lot of women. But it just don't fill you up at the end of the meal. So I would have never got somebody like that. Now me, they said, well, Leon, who would you hire? Myra Mixon. Barbecue every day, all day. That's what the Clintons did. Bill wanted hamburgers, hot dogs, and he wanted ribs or pulled pork. He was a good old country boy. So that's what Bill wanted. But then the Obamas came in and they hired the first female. Her name is Christetta Comerford. She's out of Maryland, out of Columbia. She's been there for a long time. I don't know how she did with the current president because he has a foreign wife or the current ex-president because, you know, you get somebody who's foreign born, it's hard to impress them on their own food and their own culture because they're going to think my mom was the best ever. So, you know, when you go and you want to hire somebody or you invite guests to your house, you make sure you can cook what they're used to eating. So that's kind of how it works out now. But, you know, when people talk about these celebrity chefs at the White House, you got a huge, you, you know, it's, it, it's like a restaurant. You got two kitchens. You got about 16 to 20 people. 
they do a lot of things for you all you do is lay out the menu and if it's not on the menu create something you got any ingredient in the world you want you can fly in elk you can fly in whale meat because if you got the prime minister of japan you're gonna have some whale meat we all understand that and if you got the prime minister of china you or, or, or the president of china you're gonna have some animals that you might consider a pet as your main meal but you can't be afraid to cook that pet now you know i i'm not gonna say about like europe because if you go to europe you're gonna eat some pig feet or ham hocks or neck bones you're gonna have some of that now i don't know what you would feed somebody from a country like south africa because they eat everything they eat all the meat you name it they eat it it could be a kangaroo a tortoise it could be a cow it could be a, a zebra if it's got four legs or more it, well in some cases it can have two like a kangaroo they are going to eat the hell out of that so my whole point is you have these people who are considered celebrity cooks celebrity chefs and you know people assume that this person is the best there is at the white house you're not going to get the best there is for 85 maybe 100 grand a year no but it is a great luncheon platform it's a great place to start to move on but most of the ones there though they don't necessarily stay just for the president and the first lady now michelle obama was kind of neat because she can cook and she would have presidential cook-offs against her chef she she was very competitive and it's kind of weird that michelle was very competitive and then you get george bush the second george bush he put out uh, a cookbook called the bush family recipes and put his name on it and put his wife name on it now i got no problem with him putting out a book with his family recipes if they were his family recipes and not the chef's recipes now people would take credit for things that you do and the white house hey i'm sure they got some kind of non-disclosure uh, agreement that anything you do that's great i'm going to take credit for anything you don't that's not great i'm going to make sure i blame you so you know when can you imagine what you know i told you earlier that bill clinton ate a lot of soul food in the white house he was one of the few presidents in the white house that had collard greens can you imagine that can you imagine you know some presidents like just bagels and like i said a lot of presidents hire french cooks i'm not sure maybe because they were good at the wine selection but you got a lot of people i got some uncles who can drink the hell out of some wine they may not know the flavor they may not know the color but they know one thing you drink enough of it, you don't care about the flavor or the color of the wine. Some people call them winos. I call them uncles. It is what it is. Now, the difficulty of cooking for um, somebody like the Obamas is that when you got like your um, teenage kids and you got to cook for those damn bastards, that could be very, very tough. Because everybody knows teenagers got the worst appetite, the worst eating habits, and the worst eating times in history. But luckily they had Michelle around. Now, some cooks have quit on the president. Oh yeah, Nixon cook just quit. Just quit on the president. Because they disagreed on the menus. Now, if I'm the president... I know what I want to eat. But 
I hired you or you stayed on because you've been making the right decision on what I should feed my guest for a very, very long time. So I'm going to trust you unless my guests complain about you. But just because I want a beef hot dog and you've been cooking pork for everybody else, hey, it doesn't bother me if it doesn't bother them. And most first ladies get very, very involved in the chef menus. Nah, you know what? Just surprise me. Just surprise me, and I can go from there. I'm happy with you just surprising me. I don't want to um, micromanage your job as long as you don't micromanage my taste buds. You know, because if I'm president, they're going to say, hey, Leon, what are we having tonight? Smoke ribs. What about tomorrow night? Smoke chicken. What about after that? Smoke ribeye. What about after that? Smoke pool pork. You see the theme here? Now, I'm going to tell you about two about two celebrity chefs that you never, never heard of. You never heard of them. But they were the first two celebrity chefs to cook in the White House. The first guy, his name was Hercules. I don't mean Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. Like some, um, the Crump TV uh, movie. No, his name is Hercules Posey. He was born in Virginia. He was a slave. A lot of your great, great early chefs and cooks were all slaves. That kind of tells you the race they came from. They were all slaves. And um, he was the chef for George Washington. And people bragged about his food for miles and miles around Mount Vernon. They bragged about it. And the reason they bragged about it because they said that you can eat food at one o'clock and still feel full at five o'clock. People, that's called Southern food. And he would cook stuff like jambalaya. He would cook stuff like sweet potato pies. I mean, he would cook beef, pork. It didn't matter to him. He was not a classical trained chef. He was just a great, great cook. He cooked for George Washington when he was a general. He cooked for him when he was president. So when he had guests from around the world, he was the guy that cooked all those meals. Now, I guess by now you figured out that most early celebrity chefs were slaves. Oh, yeah, he was a slave. The one thing that George Washington did do before his death, he made him a free man because in Virginia, being a free man was not normal nor expected. So, you know, when he was acquired by Washington, Washington bought him because his neighbor, John Long, I'm sorry, John Posey, did not pay a debt that he owed Washington. So Washington said, I've eaten your food. At your place, I will take your chef. And then Martha came in the picture and gave him a wife named Alice. They had three or four kids who were good cooks. So for him being the chef and most chefs did not sleep in the slave cabin. No, they slept in the master's area. Reason being most of them had to serve the friends of their slave owners around the clock. It didn't matter what time you was tired. If a friend stopped by and visit at two in the morning, they expected a full meal at two in the morning. So that's how all that evolved. So the next person I'm going to tell you about I'm going to see if you can put this together by yourself. Now, I know some of you, you're not that bright. I mean, let's just get down to the point. You're never going to put this together. But at the end, I will tell you where I'm going with this. It was another cook who was known and he was famous for his food. He worked at Monticello 
in Virginia. Yeah, you know. And um, the person who hired him was a lady named Martha Jefferson. His name was James Hemmings. He was a very classical trained chef in France. And he was um, called the Chef du Cuisine. Oh, yeah. Cuisine was his thing. Very creative. He was a baker by trade, but learned how to master the other foods of the world. And when I say master, he could cook almost anything you wanted. He could cook almost anything you wanted. And he was not a good cook at first. No, he wasn't. But um, he was uh, he was he was told that if you want to sleep inside, you got to be one of two things, a concubine or a chef. So he quickly learned how to cook. And then he got sent to France to learn other cooking methods and habits. Now, the funny thing about him was that his brother was just as good as he was. So how they picked him over his brother, I don't know. But both of them were very, very good. They were known for miles around. So you had two cooks in Virginia. You know, you had James Posey, I mean, Hercules Posey, and you had James Hemmings, who could really, really cook. Now, the thing with um, James Hemmings that was unique, he was um, known as a guy who was up and coming, and he applied to Paris to learn how to cook. They accepted him. His sister was the one who wrote his application. Now, her name was Sally Hemmings. You may see a connection there between James and Sally. James was the older brother of Sally Hemmings. She told him that you need to either be a concubine or a cook. And only one of those jobs is available to you. Because I think Sally had the other job lined up. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she had it lined up working for Martha and Thomas Jefferson. Yeah. So what he learned how to do was cook the things that no other chef in Virginia could cook. Because remember, he went to Paris, went to school. So Jefferson spent money on him. I don't know how you spend money on a slave and make them feel good about it because at the end of the day they are still a slave but you know you're talking about the early 1700s you know or the late 1700s so maybe he felt like he wasn't but i'm sure thomas knew he was and i'm sure his sister sally hemmings knew he was so what happened was he learned how to cook when he was young but was never asked to be a cook he did cotton, tobacco, and all those kind of things until the cook before him got killed as a runaway. So when he worked for Jefferson in Philadelphia, that's when everybody discovered that this guy was the real deal. So you learned some things today. I hope you enjoyed them. But your true celebrity shifts were slaves for the first three presidents. So one day I'll come back and I'll tell you about your other great chefs that's not named Emerald, that's not named Bobby Flay, you know, that that's, that's, that's not named um, some of the other guys out here who really can't, they cook good food for somebody, but when I look at them, I don't think it would be for me. This is Showbiz Eats. We'll see you next time.